some 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 hit the key what up guys welcome to the channel my name is something 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 hit the keys in case this is your first time viewing uh, in today's video i'm going to take you guys on my journey on how i upgraded my studio area from this to this so basically, um, I did a whole bunch of research, scouring the internet like we all do. I'm looking to try to figure out maybe the most affordable way to upgrade or to find a desk. So I saw all kinds of different desks, but I didn't like any of the desks. I don't like traditional studio desks for music because of the way they are. They're just awkward to me. Um, so then I stumbled across this Ikea desk hat. So I was like, bet. So I grabbed out my pen and paper. I took a bunch of notes. I figured out what I wanted to get. I went to Ikea, got online, and they were sold out of everything. Wah, wah, wah. Yeah, I know. So basically, I couldn't get what I wanted to get. So I'm not going to lie to you. The first day, you know, they were going to be able to deliver a tabletop to me. I woke up in the morning, um, and it was gone. So I was like, man, I can't even do the Ikea desk hat because Ikea don't have nothing. Who would ever thought Ikea wouldn't have nothing? Um, so basically, I, I looked up a bunch of other different places and I found that Lowe's actually has some pretty solid butcher block countertops that you can use. And they have a lot more um, combinations of sizes with some of their countertops. So you can get like anywhere from 48 to like 96 inches um, and you can get them more deep so they can be more depth. So you can get them up to 30 inches in depth. So that was something that you can't get with Ikea. So I basically decided uh, I'm going to order something from Lowe's. Shout out to Lowe's for the free delivery, which basically made the countertop that I got $179, which was dope. Um, so then I went to Amazon and I found some nice legs on Amazon. I got those legs and then I ordered a bunch of stuff um, in order to build and make the area more suitable to not only produce music, but to make YouTube content and to edit videos. Um, so this was basically um, the setup before. Um, as you can see, I had speakers on top of speakers. I didn't even have speaker stands. It was two separate desks that weren't the same size. So uh, they didn't sit the same height and they weren't the same depth. Um, and then as you look below, the cord management was just terrible. Nobody ever called me the Michael Jordan of cord management. Um, so in this video, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you guys how I built the desk, uh, the, some of the stuff that I put together, give you guys the final product and let you guys figure out if I got that cord management handled. But let's go ahead and get right into the time lapse. Whoosh. So I had to put a top coat on the desk to prevent any water stains and to protect the wood. Pause. I went with the satin polyurethane gloss and I opted to make my own wipe on poly mixture because I wasn't messing with that paintbrush and that extra cleanup. This method is much easier. In order to make the mix, you will mix eight ounces of polyurethane and eight ounces of mineral spirits. Make sure you stir up that poly real well though as it thickens on the bottom and you don't want that in your mix. It doesn't have to be exact when you blend the two, just eyeball it. Apparently, I failed my first attempt to eyeball a half a bottle. Make sure it looks like it would fail a urinalysis when you're done. That's how you know the mix is the good stuff. Let it sit for 30 minutes so it can properly blend. While the wipe on poly was setting, I took a tack cloth, which is super waxy and sticky if you've never used one, and used it to remove all the dust and debris from the tabletop. The tabletop was smooth when I got it, so there was no need for me to sand before applying the poly. Now it's game time. To apply the poly, I just cut up an old shirt and folded it as seen in the video. I folded it this way because it makes it easy to apply and spread evenly. So after finishing folding the cloth, it's time to pour some poly onto the countertop. I used a bottle to mix the poly with because it makes it easy to apply, seal, and store when done. When pouring the poly, don't pour too much and drown the countertop. Just apply a little. Pretend you're pouring out a little for your homies and that'll suffice. When you finish pouring the poly onto the table, start spreading it out. You don't have to necessarily focus on following the grain of the wood to start and don't forget the sides. After it was all spread out, I did make sure it was evenly dispersed and I did decide to follow the grain as I wiped over it one last time. Disclaimer, I'm not Bob Vila or Bob the Builder, so don't look for poly suggestions in the comments from me. I'm just a brother that needed to upgrade his studio on a budget. Man, look, I didn't even tell y'all about this chair yet, because look at it. Who would brag about this? Lol. So I'm just going to recover the chair and use it. As beat up as it looks, it's got the most comfortable butt cushion ever. In the words of the great Beyonce, that cushion so bootylicious for you, babe. 
So I'm just gonna take off the seat from the chair and wrap it like some rims, except with the fresh navy blue bed sheet. If you've upholstered furniture, please close your eyes for this part. So I folded the sheet in half so it would be double the thickness so you couldn't see through it and cut around the seat to get a basic idea of how much I'd need. After cutting the sheet, I took it inside and ironed it so it wouldn't be wrinkled when finished. Next, I laid the sheet out and placed the seat on top of it and started folding the sheet on top of the chair to get an idea of how to make it work. Then was the fun part. I grabbed the trusty staple gun and started stapling the sheet to the chair. I started in the back where the cushion curves and applied a few staples. Then I came back to the front and pulled the sheet tight and applied some more staples. After that, I just applied staples around the chair, pulling tightly on the sheet to make sure there was no wrinkles in the top when I was done. It was pretty simple. Side note, I did this while the polyurethane was drying. When all was said and done, this is what the chair looked like. It's amazing what a facelift will do for you. Once the polyurethane dried, I lightly sanded the surface with 400 grit sandpaper. Don't use the pour technique shown by this man in the video. When you decide to sand, start at one end of the table and in one long stroke sand from one end to the other end lightly. You want to simply smooth out the surface, not sand all the gloss away. After I sanded, I used a tack cloth to remove the dust. It took about two hours for each coat of poly to dry. I applied two coats on the bottom and four on the top. Note, if you're nervous, try starting on the bottom, so if you mess up, no one will see. And make sure you wipe up any excess poly that drips to the bottom side when applying. I won't make you watch every application of poly though. So here's what the final desktop looked like. Ooh wee, look at that wood. Pause. After the poly fully dried, I measured the distance of the legs to make sure they were the same distance apart on each side of the desk. I used a marker to mark where the holes in the table should be drilled to make drilling the holes easier. I did the same thing for these wired baskets I'm using to hold the surge protector and all the power bricks from the different power cords I use. And now for everybody, I mean everybody's favorite part of the process, drilling that hole. I mean, what's really there for me to explain? This is pretty standard stuff here. So I brought the desk in and put the legs on. Why not do it in the area you drill the holes in, you may ask? Because I didn't want to bang up the walls in the house carrying a six foot long desk. Come on, man. So after screwing in those legs, what's next? You guessed it, time to screw in those baskets. So I only put this part in because I've seen some terrible examples on how to turn a table over. Do it this way, it's really simple. So I got this Ergear spring monitor arm on Amazon for 50 bucks. It's actually a pretty solid monitor arm. It only took me about 10 minutes to set up. It would have been faster had I skipped reading the instructions. They were doo-doo. I decided to upgrade my monitor situation, since my previous monitor was just an old Samsung 32-inch TV. The letters looked like Nintendo pixels on that thing because, well, it was a TV, not a computer monitor. I went with the LG 32UL500. Man, that's a mouthful. Pause. It's 4K and perfect for my needs for producing music and editing video. After pulling everything out of the box, I easily mounted the monitor. The TV mount both came with screws to mount it. It's compatible with Visa mounts in case you were wondering.
One thing that I really like about this mount is that it has cord management built into it. It has two separate trays that connect to the mount that hide the cords for you. I got a pair of monitor stands and a pair of monitor isolation pads from Amazon for a combined 70 bucks. No more studio monitors on tiny speakers from me. Mama, I made it. I measured the distance of both the stands and speaker to ensure they were the same distance from where I sat at the desk for best sound quality. Then I plugged in all the wires so I could start to get some kind of idea on how I was going to manage all these cords. I unpackaged this beauty of a mic arm called the Rode PSA-1. I can't lie, this whole video was like an unboxing extravaganza. This mic arm is pretty simple to set up. I just pulled it out of the box and tightened the screw and it was ready for use. I clamped it on the side of the desk so it'd be easily accessible. I scooped up a shock mount for my Rode NT-1 because I'm a Neanderthal and I didn't have one. I figured if I'm going to be using a boom arm, I definitely need a shock mount now. All I had to do was screw on the pop filter, drop the mic into the shock mount, and screw it in. This easily screwed onto the mic boom arm. Next, a little something 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 for me. A Chicago Bulls mouse pad. Yes sir, re Bob. Then we put the Arturia Keylab Essential 49 into place and cracked open a jelly comb wireless keyboard and mouse set. And what desk setup would be complete without cheap RGB strips and a couple of light bars? The RGB strips are for the desk and the back of the TV. The light bars are for underneath the speakers. Last but definitely not least, I had to get cable management under control. For that, you already saw the wire trays I applied to the table, but I didn't stop there. I also got these cable raceways, I picked up a package of cable clips, and I also got zip ties all from Amazon to handle the job. Alright guys, so that's how I got everything put together step by step. Um, I left out the mounting of the lights to the back of the TV and the table and the cord management because nobody wants to see that part. But I can't stress enough that I'm very, very happy with the way everything turned out. Um, I feel like it's a much more productive space for me to work on music, YouTube, to edit videos, to record music. Uh, I can't stress enough. I'm just very happy with the way everything turned out. Um, but with no further ado, let's go ahead and get to the buttery C minus B roll. Look at that cord management. Another thing that I love about this setup is that I can prop up two sound panels in the corner, turn the monitor to face the corner, and easily move the boom arm over to record vocals. I have another pop filter connected to the shelf, so all I have to do is turn the mic around in the shock mount, and we're in business with minimal effort. All 
All right, I just wanna thank everyone who watched this video. I hope it gives you some ideas or inspiration for your creative space or your workspace. Uh, make sure if you guys like this content, you drop a whole elbow on that like button, hit subscribe and that notification bell so every time we bring you guys a new video, you can be the first to see. Appreciate you guys' time as always, and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace. All right, guys and gals, thanks for watching the video. Uh, make sure you hit the subscribe and like button. Uh, make sure you hit that notification bell so every time a new video comes out, you can be the first to know. Uh, let me know what tutorials you want to see next in the comments, and see you next time. Some, 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 hit the key.